I want everybody to understand this one sentence, and this is going to be a pinnacle part of what I'm talking about today, but stop sweating the offer amount. I want everybody to say this to yourself and say it very, very slowly. Stop sweating the offer amount. So many of you guys and gals out here are sweating how much you're offering your motivated sellers. You are sweating the amount that you have to give out or the perfect offer. It's got to be, everything's got to be perfect and immaculate and the best. And that's not the truth. You should not be sweating how much you're offering the motivated seller. Like the guys, I don't sweat when I make an offer because I know if the seller takes that offer, I'm make a ton of money. Okay. I sweat maybe some of the negotiations on that and, and what I might have to do ar around there. But really, I, I don't sweat when I offer a seller. And you should not be sweating the offer amount either because once you sweat the offer amount, that's when you get destroyed in this business. Th that is when things do not go very well for you. And what you should sweat about though is the motivation. So stop sweating the offer amount and start sweating over the motivation of the seller. I get worried when I talk to a lead and I don't really see much motivation. That's what gets me sweaty. That's what gets me nervous. Cause I'm like, Oh shoot. Are they motivated? Are they not motivated? This is, oh no. They need to be motivated. That is what you should be sweating over guys. Because if a seller, it doesn't matter. Like I just want everybody to understand the only way we can get really good deals is when the seller has motivation. Motivation on the property, which is ugly, or motivation with the seller in their situation of wanting to get rid of the property for cash. Those are the two ways to get really good deals. So either they sweat the offer amount, which you should not do, or you should start sweating the motivation of the, of the seller, right? Nobody ever talks about this. Every single person on YouTube talks about how you have to go out here and be the, this crazy closer type person. And a lot of you guys and gals out here are selling peanut butter to people that are deathly allergic to peanut butter. It's like, it, it makes no sense. I want to sell peanut butter to people that love Reese's peanut butter cups. They probably like peanut butter, right? That, that seems like a good deal. So I'm not going to give offers to people that aren't motivated. That, that literally makes no sense to me. All right. We got the world cup coming up. If, why would I try to sell a NFL ticket package to somebody in France that loves uh, soccer or the way they call it the world cup football, right? Why would I do that? That makes no sense. Maybe I can sell maybe, uh, I don't know if they live in Paris, a uh, PSG season, like, uh, like a team in France. Why well, don't I sell that? Right. So it's like, guys, you're not going to sell snow cone. Like, so it's like a snow cone, right? So if I'm in Colorado in the mountains, selling ice cream to someone like that, that's really cold. It's probably not going to do as well as if I try to sell hot chocolate, right? It's just, it, it's about the motivation, right? I'm more motivated to have a hot chocolate when it's cold than having an ice cream when it's cold, right? It's just those simple things. So, so many people are like, oh, I got to make sure the ice cream is the best price possible. Why? Why don't you just overcharge for hot chocolate? People are going to buy it. They're cold. Same thing. If I charge $2 for a cold water in Florida in the summer, I'm probably, the motivation's high, okay? They're willing to take the low ball, which is a high price on the water bottle because there's a ton of motivation. Now, if there is, you know, a 7-Eleven across the street, it's probably not going to do too well, right? The motivation's down for wanting a water right there. There's a water fountain right there. It's more about the motivation than the offer price. I think so many people get this really confused in wholesaling real estate. And I want everybody to understand this too. You are not going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody is perfect. We are human beings, okay? We are not perfect. You, when you give offers out, you will mess up. You will probably fail. I fail all the time. I have no problem with that. Winners fail. But the winners from the failure, what they do from there, that's how they become very successful. So I want everybody understanding this, watching this today, that focus on the motivation. But before I give them the offer, because everyone's going to use this for like non-motivated sellers. You guys, this has to be for motivated sellers, people that want to sell the property, people that want to get rid of the property for cash. This is what we need to focus on. So that being said, we understand this. What is my offer formula? What is my process? What is this? My process simply is to simplify your process, increase profits. So let's get into the offer formula. So I just want everybody to understand this. The process I'm about to give to you is super simple. Because once you simplify things, you actually make more money. 
once you simplify, I, once I started simplifying my wholesaling real estate process, my acquisitions, my marketing, my dispo processes, once I simplified it and made it more about the people than the actual process itself, once you care more about the seller and their situation than the offer, your profits are going to increase because this is a people's business. So many people think it's not a people's business. It, it's a people business. Okay. We are writing contracts with people, not robots. We're not buying stocks. Stocks are basically bought from a robot trading, you know, thing algorithm. Like we're going on an exchange and buying it and the numbers aren't emotional, right? People are emotional when writing the contracts. And I want everybody to understand that once you simplify your process, you'll increase your profit. So let me ask you a question. This is the number one question you have to ask yourself when you give an offer price. Do you know your seller's bottom line price when you go meet with the seller? You never spoke about price at all. Do you know the seller's bottom line price, the least they would take on the deal? I want everybody in the comments to, to ask, say, I, I know, or say you don't know. Do you or do you not? When you meet with the seller, can you meet, read their mind and see what the lowest they're going to be on the house? I would love to know because if somebody can, I, I would love to have a great insight on how to read minds because I definitely like to use that. But I want everybody to understand do you know the seller's bottom line price? If you never mentioned price before, you cold call a seller and say, when they sell their house, do you know what the lease are going to take for it? No, you do not know. We, we cannot read minds here. That, that is not what we do. We do not read minds. Okay, I hope everybody understands this. We cannot read people's minds. We are not mind readers. Okay, we, we, can, get a, we can get into a mysticism uh, live stream another day, but this, this is not, this is for wholesaling. Okay. And I love this question. I love this one. If you seriously think the bottom line price the sellers want to take on a deal is this estimate, you are grossly mistaken. You are grossly mistaken because they would have gone with the realtor, try to list it for that price and not gotten that price. Their bottom line is never this estimate. Why do I go on my live streams, close sellers for 50, 60, 70, 80, even hundred thousand dollars below this estimate? Their bottom line is never this estimate, right? You don't know. They could sell for 50K under what the thing's worth. They could want to sell for 5K under. Everybody's different. And based on their motivation, they're most likely, most likely going to want to get a lower price. So this is why motivation is going to be the most important thing for us guys and gals out here. You need to know, you don't know what your seller's bottom line price is. So that being said, no, we do not know. So now we know that we understand that we have no idea. Okay. But we do have an idea of one thing though. And this is where we have a lot of leverage in our negotiations, in our conversations with motivated sellers. This is where we get a lot of leverage for getting the best deals possible. This is where we make our money in wholesaling real estate. And this is what we can focus on. So focusing number one on motivation, but number two, since I don't know at all what the seller's bottom line price is, I can know one thing though. I know how much a cash buyers should more or less buy the property at, right? So I want everybody to, I want to ask everybody a, a simple question. If you know for a fact on a, Let's do an example here. If a cash buyer is willing to buy a real estate deal at a hundred thousand dollars, would would anything really affect what the offer you're going to get? If you know the cash buyer is willing to buy it at a hundred thousand dollars, what price would you offer to the person? I want everybody to know because this is always an interesting one. I get a wide array of people when they're offers. Oh, what off from 90? Oh, what off from 50? I'd offer him 10. I'd offer him 20. I'd offer him 90. I'd offer him 97. I, I'm generally curious what the people here think because I want to see how different it is from my offer formula. I'm, I'm interested in what people's uh, offer formulas are. They, they, they go to realsing.com, they get the free content, they, they know how all this stuff works. But I'm generally curious what people think of that. And why people are writing down in the comments. I, I'm not looking at the comments yet. I'm excited to see it. I want everybody to understand this because this is a mindset shift when it comes to giving offers for everybody. If you know your cash buyer is going to buy this deal at $100,000, does 
does it matter how much they own the property? Does that change anything? Truthfully. So if the seller owes $60,000 on the property, is that going to change my offer price? If the seller owes 100000 on it, is that going to affect my offer price? No. I hope you know, whatever situation the seller has, their motivation, tenants, whatever happens to the house, the fact that a cash buyer will buy it at $100,000, it doesn't matter. I do not care that your Aunt Shirley has sentimental value on the property. It's worth $100,000. Like I used an example yesterday, if somebody's looking to sell a handbag for five bucks, I don't care that you had the handbag for 10 years. I care about what the thing's worth. That being said, we, we know that since the thing's worth 100,000, what offer would you give? Let's see what the comments. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious. We're getting 90 on it. Okay. 85, 60, 110, 80, 85, 70, sell for 80. See, that's decent, right? Because you'll make 10K profit. So no, you'll sell for 100. If a cash buyer's going to buy it for 100, they'll buy it for 100. So if you lock it for 70, you'll make 30, right? 55, 85, because that's 15K profit. 70, 50. 90, 50, 85, 40, 70, 70, 50, 80, 90, right? Like we're getting all these. Here's the thing. That seller in this example, their bottom line price was 60. Okay? We're using this for an example. That means... Higher Grounds REI lost out on $20,000 on profit there. Young to Real lost out on, what, 30 grand in additional profit, right? Milton lost 10 grand. OPM probably would do fine. That's Omar would have lost money. Janine would have made the same amount. Akil would have lost money. I'm looking at 10 grand you'd lose, 25 grand, right? Here's the thing, 80. The person that probably done the what right is Young Diesel here because Young Diesel would be 50. They would say 80. They'd meet in the middle and probably get 65, 60. I want you guys to know because you did not know. This is why I asked you, do you know the seller's bottom line price? You don't. So you guys have tried to offer guessing what their bottom line price was. I literally asked you this question. What's the seller's bottom? You don't know? But now you tried guessing with the cash buyer. Here's the thing we don't know. But we can generally go and just lowball from there and see what it's going to be. Now, I'm not telling you to offer 40, you know, 50s, pushing it right. But it, I want everybody to understand, what if the cash buyer is willing to buy it for 110,000, 190, right? Like, does that shift it a little? Yeah, it does shift it. But I want everybody to understand that the offer you give it doesn't matter. We don't know what the seller's price is going to be. So we just got to give it, right? But that being said, if we knew the seller was going to take 60 for it, a lot of you guys out here offering 70, you probably need be at 85. You just lost out on 20, 30 grand. And based on the motivation, that's how we get it from there. And I want everybody to understand that. You have to lowball in this business. So let's break down the formula. I just That being said, we're playing some mind games on you. I'm going to give everybody a general instant offer formula, okay? Now, see, most sellers won't take 60. I'm just being honest with you. Like, that, that was an example just to show that we don't know anything. But let, let, let me help you out here, okay? My instant offer formula, step one, you're going to comp and find A or V two minutes tops. I, I only get it, it. It is a blitz estimate, all right? You can comp and find ARV probably on Zillow, realtor.com, whatever service you want to do in a disclosure state. Two minutes. Two minutes. All right? Two minutes. That's all you stinking have. You got prop stream, batch. That makes it easier, I guess. But you don't really need that stuff, right? Starting out as a beginner. ARV and comping, two minutes. That's all I'm giving you. I'm giving you two minutes. Two stinking minutes. Because how do you find an offer price in two minutes? Oh no, what are we going to do? This is how it works. You only hit two minutes to guess it. And this is because so many people spend 30, 40, 50 minutes and they do 10 properties and it's the entire day. With here, we're going to create a blitz estimate MAO. All right. Y'all love, I love football. You see how the blitz works. 
You just got to go after it, right? Here's the thing. Once I find what my ARV is and my repair costs more or less, then we can go from there and, and sort of figure it all out, right? I think so many people really overcomplicate this business and they really think that wholesaling real estate is this crazy, difficult, insane process. But uh, really when it comes to finding ARV, repair costs, things like that, it's actually not that complicated, right? So what I want to do here is kind of share with you how to find repair costs too in this to make it easier. But we find the ARV. So how am I going to find the ARV? Honestly, I look at a property and I see three comparables the past four or five three, four months. I'm just going to use that, get a quick estimation of the square foot, multiply it, and then just get like a general range. Your general range should be good enough. Like, like guys, we're lowballing on this. So like, we're not going to focus too much on it. All right. Like we're, we're not really going crazy on it. And what we're going to do is just do the offer formula I have at freelancing.com. So we're going to find ARV minus repairs and multiply it by a percentage point. So how do I find repair costs guys? Because we only have two minutes, we're just going to do the free wholesaling.com repair cost worksheet. So this is the free wholesaling.com repair cost worksheet. Pretty simple, right? Pretty easy, not complicated, not stressful. This is little, I literally guys, I am in free wholesaling.com right here. Okay. I am in free wholesaling.com and right here we have our worksheet. Okay. We got a lot of really good graphics in free wholesaling.com guys. It's free. It's a free wholesaling course. But I look here, this is going to be more or less a repair cost worksheet and don't screenshot. It's all at freelancing.com. So don't worry about that. Right. But that is pretty much it. So like, I mean, take a screenshot if you really need to, if you're being a rebel, you don't like freelancing.com, but first of all, what's wrong with you if you don't, but that's basically the repair cost worksheet. It's not that complicated based on the square foot of the house. If it needs light, medium, heavy, It'd take you maybe... 15, 20, 30 seconds to figure out if you're light, medium, or heavy. You'll know heavy. Okay. You'll know heavy, heavy. Mediums where most properties are at if it's ugly. And then light is, it's not that bad, but it still needs something, right? And so just more or less, this is what our formula is going to be from there. So that being said, we know that, guys. Go to freelancing.com. Just want everybody to know that. That's how we figure it out. So that being said here, we really got to figure out what our MAO is. We, we just spent two minutes. Oh my gosh, time's ticking. What am I going to do? We're going to use this formula and that's all we're going to do. So what's the formula, right? Depending on your ARV, your after repair value, if your ARV is over, sorry, under $120,000, it's ARV minus repairs times 70%. And if anybody says my, oh, my guru says this. Oh, my mentor says that. I, I don't care. I don't care what your broke guru got to say. All right. I don't care. They broke. So I don't care. <laughs> ARV minus repairs times 70% equals all deals ARV under 120. Do that. That's going to be your MAO. 120 to 200, 80%, I'd say here. And then from ARV minus repairs, I'd multiply it by 83% if it's 200 to 300 ARV. Now, I want you guys to understand ARVs. Don't use ARVs from a year ago till now because property values have gone down. If you do that, you're not going to do well. Just want everybody to understand that. 350 plus, probably 85%. Okay, that is what we're going to do. And we're going to use that repair chart. We're going to guess it. We're, we're not going to get too complicated on this, right? I think so many wholesalers, they get super complicated in this business. And honestly, that's not it. What I can tell you though, especially when it comes to repair charts and um, going out and figure out, you, you just don't complicate it. I'm telling you, most of you guys complicate this business and it doesn't do well. And so what is the instant offer? From, what is the special secret sauce I've been building up to in this entire video? What is it? Let, let me share it right now. This is going to blow your mind. We figure out what the MAO is, but how much are you going to offer, right? What's my offer? Just offer 30% off the MAO. And this is very general, but we need in two minutes, we got to give an offer out there. Just do 30% off the max allowable offer. When everybody listen to me one more time, 30% off the max allowable offer. So if I have an MAO of hundred thousand dollars, my initial offer should be 70. And this is, you can do lower if you want, right? 60 fit, but this is just a suggestion. Because 
when you get a higher MAOs, that's when it gets a little squirrely. So if your MAO, maybe 35, 40% if the ARV is under 120 maybe, but like really it's, it's all a guessing game because most sellers are going to take that, but that's okay. We're just lowballing, right? If our MAO is $250,000, then our offer should be 175. That's a very, 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 very low ball offer, but we, I can you all, I have to use a one size fit all approach on this, so that is going to be the best one size fit all approach for everybody. I want everybody to understand this is not a seventy percent rule, okay? It, it's none of this. You just got to go out here and give offers. This is what this business is about. You just got to give offers. You miss a hundred percent of the shots you, you never take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. So I want everybody to understand that. You have to just give offers. The more offers you give, the better chance you're going to get them accepted. But offering the right way, again, that's why I got a fearlessing.com because how you offer is more important than what you offer. And I want everybody to really understand that. How you present your offer with your confidence, your authority, is going to be way more important than the numbers you, you do. Because... If you do not have any confidence in your offer, you're not going to do well in this business. You have to have confidence when talking to these motivated sellers. You have to have authority when talking to motivated sellers. And you have to have the utmost confidence when you're giving that lowball offer out there. And you got to do it the right way, right? So we'll break that all down too today. But I want people to understand that y'all are just complicating the offer process. You guys are making it super difficult for you. You're making it super difficult for your motivated sellers. Confidence and authority. Uh Angelica's got it right. Confidence and authority. That's it. Don't complicate it. So when everybody comes up to me and they get so stressed out over what to offer, it, I don't care. Okay, this is what it should be. I think so many wholesalers, this is when they, they get destroyed doing it, right? They think, oh, but what about this? What about this? Did I stutter? Did I stutter? No, no, I didn't stutter. Okay, I said it the right way. That is what I said. So that is how you should... Or you're supposed to do it. It drives me crazy when people don't do it. Guys, I want everybody to understand this. This is a cold, hard fact about wholesaling real estate. These offers will most likely be rejected. But the point here is we can negotiate it up and make really good spreads. You make more money lowballing than by not lowballing. And not because the lowballs are always accepted, but because when you negotiate, you end up getting a better price. So let me explain. If we have two ends of a spectrum on price of a negotiation, right? So let's say the thing is worth $1,000. If I initially offer 100, a super low ball, but most people offer 300. And this one guy's at, a, at 2,000. If I meet in the middle, so if I'm at this price and the other person's at this price and we meet the middle, wait, for this and we meet in the middle, we get like here. But if I'm over here and they're there and we meet at the middle, we meet at the middle like right here, which means the price is actually by lowballing, I actually get a lower price. So let's do an example like this. So if I lowball here and we meet in the middle, we're at like this. But if I lowball from here and we meet in the middle, we're at like we're at like that, which means we just made that much more spread because they lowballed more. A lot of sellers sometimes make decisions based on a logic. And meet in the middle is the most logical thing anybody can do. That is how you become very successful. I think so many people really get confused on this. And I just want to understand this. Your offer is most likely going to get rejected. But how you offer is going to determine your success when it comes to offering these lowball deals and these lowball offers so you get the best deal possible. What's the worst case scenario? Whenever, what if I can't find comps? Oh my gosh, I'm screwed. This is the worst thing in the world. I get that all the time. Let's go after our doomsday scenario. Worst thing in the world, all right? You're just going to ask the cash buyer how much they're willing to buy the house for. And that, that's worst case scenario. So y'all should have your buyers ready. But hey, Mr. Scheller, how much are you willing to buy the property for? And then lowball from there. That's really it. That's really it. So the next question, which I didn't really even have to go over today, but I do want to just kind of recap it for everybody here is, okay, Zach, you're talking a big game, how to find the offer price, but how do I give it, right? Because you keep talking about it and people get uh, worked up over it. So uh, I will explain again, which y'all should just go to freelancing.com. 
to where I teach it all. But I'll, I'll just show you the, the basic four methods of giving the right lowball, right? There's the price first method, which basically just asks the seller how much they're willing to sell it for. And then we counter with the, with the lowball, right? Dollar bill method. So if somebody says, oh, Zach, I have no idea how much you want to sell the property for. I kind of counter it with like, <laughs> I mean, would you take a dollar for the property? No. Two dollars? No. Three? No. Four? No. Why, why are you offering me four bucks for the house? Well, you said never had a price. So I'm guessing we just buy, I'll buy this thing for four bucks right now. No, I'm at this price. Boom. Go from there. Right. And then counter from there. Good cop, bad cop is my favorite one. So it's basically, hey, Mr. Seller, I was talking to my partner, Rick, and he was really more or less at like 60,000 on this house. Get the reaction, negotiate from there. Works really well. Rick, Rick really loves the volley method. So basically the volley method is the method for actually going out here, talking to a motivated seller. And be like, how much are you looking to sell the house for? I have no idea. Well, if you didn't know what it would be, and you kind of volley it like a volleyball back and forth about four or five times. You, you kind of ask it in a different way. Uh, sort of like an interrogation, if that made sense. Uh, if, if you do it like an interrogation, uh, things sort of change and it actually works pretty well. So uh, that is pretty much how you give an offer in under two minutes. Uh, I want people to understand that once you actually go out here and talk to a motivated seller, the more conversations you have with motivated sellers, the more money you're going to make. The more offers you make, the more money you're going to make. The more you market, the more you're going to make. The more cash buyers you get, the more you're going to make. Volume in this business is great, but quality and quantity uh, is a 